Hello, and here I'm going over the bones and the features of the appendicular division of the skeleton using this complete anatomy app from 3D4 Medical. This video is just going to cover the upper limb, and the next video will continue on with the lower limb. For your appendicular skeleton, right, you remember your axial skeleton is your skull, your vertebral column, your rib cage, right, and then everything else, your limbs and the limb attachment points are your appendicular skeleton. And it's going to start with your clavicle, if we're going from the upper limb portion right here. So they're going to attach to the sternum right here, the, the only bony attachment for your appendicular skeleton right here. And so this, I'm putting on connective tissue layers, right? This ligament right here is what's holding your entire, basically, limb to the axial skeleton as far as your bony attachment. Your scapula over here you'll see is only attached to that clavicle right over here but otherwise it's just kind of floating around here right so it's a very movable thing it's basically attached through muscle attachment points to your axial skeleton and to your limb right there otherwise right, it's just floating right there in this like sea of meat so, so that is your clavicle right here. And really the only things you wanna know about this, you know, to identify it as a clavicle. And then you're gonna to wanna to identify the sternal end versus the acromial end right here, which is this flattened surface. So this is where it articulates with the scapula and in particular the, the uh, acromion process of the scapula. And this is where it articulates with your sternum. And so it's got that club shape sort of appearance on the sternal end and it's got that flattened shape, right? Otherwise kind of juts out here like an S shape and then curves back in. I do recommend, you know, while we're on the bones and when we get to the muscle, right? You got your own cheat sheet on your body kind of to kind of feel, to kind of get another tactile sense since we don't have actual labs where you actually get to pick up the bones and feel them and stuff like that and move them around. Right, feel your collarbone, like see how it connects to your breastplate, right? Your sternum right there. Move it around a little bit, move your scapula, move your like shoulder girdle around and like feel where the articulation point is right here. See what's moving, see what you could do, what kind of movement you can make with that and how it's attached and see how it curves in, right? You could feel it and then walk your fingers out to where it attaches to the acromion right there. Right? And then you can feel that bump that you feel on your arm is your acromion actually, right? At the edge of your shoulder right there as you walk your fingers out uh, toward the outer edge right there. So that's your clavicle or your collarbone. And then again, that's gonna attach to the scapula at this point. Put on some layers. It's going to attach through this ligament over here. Again, this serves really is the only point for this whole shoulder girdle area right here. That is your clavicle. And then so the scapula, this is a kind of a complicated piece. And this is one of the first ones you'll want to know if I give you a bone like this or like this, right? Are we looking at the left or the right side or bone, right? Because the scapula has a left and a right scapula. So for all those, when, and you know, just like we, I showed you during the uh, quiz or that poll right there, you're going to want to find out to identify the anterior surface versus the posterior surface, from lateral side versus the medial side, right? Uh, you're going to want to kind of look at any individual bone from, you know, a reasonable point of view and say if it's a right or left. First thing, anterior posterior surface right here. This anterior surface has a big flat plane right here. Right? This is called your subscapularis fossa over here. You also, I mean, that's the big thing, right? You could just look for one thing and keep it simple, but you could also see this kind of hook, this beak shaped thing right here. This is your coracoid process, right? That's also facing anterior, right? So let's go back to this for a second. This is you're looking at the front, and this is kind of facing anterior. This is your front anterior surface right there.
So it comes off the back and then that leads into, it's continuous with this bony feature called the acromion right here. So looking at the back and over here, this is that scapula spine. It leads off into the acromion and then forms that attachments with your clavicle over here. And again, you could, if you could reach your arm around your back right here, you could feel the scapula spine, right? Starting from that bony point up here, you can kind of walk back on your back and feel that scapula spine as it goes down. Yeah. So your ac, romium, comes off the spine, your spine, just like your spine is on the back, your scapula spine is on the posterior surface, and your acromium, your acromium comes off the spine. So your acromium is back, ac is back. That's how I uh, teach people to remember it, some, something stupid like that, right? Ac Chromium is on the back, and then it comes the spine is on the back, right? So if you know this is the scapula spine right here, you have two surfaces, uh, one above it, one below it, or in anatomical terms, one supra, one infra. So this area right here is your supra spinous fossa. This is the infra spinous fossa. And so this doesn't have any spine, so there's no spinous fossas. This is the subscapularis fossa on the anterior surface. All right, so that's your anterior, posterior kind of markings that you wanna just immediately clue on. All right, so now, right here, if I give you a picture like that, right, you know that this is on the back. So if you look, if you were facing, if a person was Let's say the front, because this is easier to kind of show. If the person was right here, this is the front, and then his face or her face would be over here, right? And then, you know, this would be the front of it. So you'd say to yourself, well, that must be his, this must be his left, Right, because it's on your right, you're facing him. Must be, a, must be his left. Uh, must be his left thing. But for, to know that, you also got to know which side right here is facing out. Right over here. In other words, if you think of this guy over here, is his? Is it on this side? Because we know it's in the front, but it could be on this side, or it could be on this side. So in other words, what I'm asking you, is this the lateral side or is this the lateral side over here? So for this one, I think it's fairly simple. I kind of went over that again. This is where your arm fits in, right? So your, again, there's this guy, you're facing him. Here's the humoral head fitting in over here, right? So this is the guy's body, basically. So this has got to be, it's on your right, that you're looking at him right there. So it's got to be his left, right? Now, some people are better than others at mentally rotating things in your head. But the way I do it is just put a body on it, right? Like mentally put a body on this thing. And once I know those positions, um, then you're going to mentally do all the mental rotations, right? It's easier. It's easier if you're looking at the back of a surface right here, because then all you got to do, this is the back of the head over here, right? And then it's on the same side as your body, right? In this case, this is his left because it's on the same side as your left. That'll also tell you, right? You know, this is where the humoral head fits in. This is facing out like this. Um, this will also tell you that this, these two borders of the scapula right over here, uh, this is your lateral border right along here, and this is the medial border, right, toward the, toward the spinal cord right there, right? So lateral border, medial border. So we went over the fossas, uh, these features right here, your acromium and your coracoid process. It's a little more front, shaped a little like a crow's beak. That's the name for coracoid apparently, right? Uh, the borders are something that for some reason people get, tend to get wrong, right? They just, probably like me, they just, brain fart and 
calling the wrong thing. But this is your lateral border right here. And this is what, again, the humoral head is facing in, right? So when you're looking at it from this view, this is the articulation point with the humoral head. This cavity, this indent right here, uh, right over here is a fossa, which means an indent right over here. And this is called the glenoid fossa, right? The nerve, the term glenoid is gonna come up in a couple of different places. Um, so first off, the glenoid fossa right over here. This is going to form the glenoid, be part of the glenoid humoral joint or shoulder joint. There's going to be glenoid ligaments, you know, ligaments named after glenoid. And then there's also two kind of landmark things right here on the top. This is called the supra glenoid tubercle. This kind of they're not super distinct, but above and below the glenoid is a supraglenoid tubercle and an infraglenoid tubercle. And these are going to be pretty important muscle attachment points. So this is one of those, that purple one. You'll see right here, right, your supraglenoid tubercle and then an infraglenoid tubercle. And why am I asking you this little little bump right here that uh, one of the origin red this means where the muscle attacks this is your origin of your long head break eye down over here and the infraglenoid tubercle is where your triceps some of your parts of your triceps muscle in the back of your arm are going to uh, originate from Right, so those are those are important points. So that's your scapula, right? Front, back, medial, lateral. All right, so your scapula again, forming your connection with your humerus, right? You got that short um, head right over here fitting into that glenoid fossa, right? And so I also want to, while we're there, I do want to like point out like the similarities between your humerus and your femur, right? That large bone that attaches to the girdle parts, right? You want to want to look at the head over here. It's fitting into this shallow socket, glenoid fossa, whereas your femur has this really pronounced neck. It's a much deeper socket over here for your hip bone right there. And so that's the head of the femur, that's the neck. Whereas like your humerus has a very short neck, right? It's almost like non-existent. So let's take a look at this right here, right? That's your humeral head right over here. Where that, this is mostly gonna be covered with articular cartilage right here. And then right at the border right here is what's called the anatomical neck of the humerus. This is going to be opposed to the surgical neck, right, which is down over here. This is a oft broken uh, region of the humerus and sports injuries and stuff. So they call it the surgical neck. Head, neck, those two necks right there, those two different named necks. And then the other thing you'll want to know, there's so this bump right, over here. Again, we're looking, this is the anterior surface right here. So these two bumps right here are the tubercles, right? the lesser and greater tubercle. Uh, the greater one is a little bit higher up, right? More superior than the lesser tubercle. So let's go just, just for compare and contrast purposes. Let's go to your femur right here, right? Your femur, notice this is the anterior surface. There's no tubercles very pronouncedly noticed, but if you go in the back right here, you got these bumps right here. And these are called trochanters. They're kind of similar, right, to these two bumps, but they're on the posterior surface. So is the greater, more obviously superior than the than the lesser trochanter. And they're on the superior and they're on the posterior surface. All right. So tubercles, right? 
one tubercle, two tubercle, lesser, greater. Lesser one is a little bit lower. Also from the posterior side, you could, you could make out the greater tubercle, but you can't, the, the lesser one is hidden, right? So this is what I use for, to mark the anterior boundary right here. Some people use some stuff on the distal end, and we'll get to that in a second. But this is what I use. I think it's more pronounced. You can make out this groove right over here. This is where your biceps tendon is going to be running up through. So this is called the bicipital groove. It's also called the intertubicular sulcus right over here because inter between the two tubercles, right? Intertubicular sulcus, meaning like a groove. So that is all in your proximal end, your head, your neck, those two uh, different necks, the tubercles and the intertubicular sulcus. Moving down, we have a less obvious bump, but again, like I said, it's important because you'll have to know it anyway when we go over muscles. This is where your deltoid muscles insert onto. That's your deltoid tuberosity right there. And that's the only thing I know on the shaft of the humerus. Times they show up, this shows up on this one as well. Deltoid tuberosity. It's kind of on the anterior lateral surface, but it's not easy to tell. It's not a marker that's going to tell you whether you're looking at the front or back because it doesn't look super different from the front or back. So down here at the distal end, you got a whole bunch of features, right? You got this big pronounced. This is your funny bone. Again, if you feel the inside of your arm right there, that big bump that sticks out, that's your funny bone. This is your medial epicondyle, right? Facing medially right over there. So your humeral, the head and the medial epicondyle are going to give you that medial surface right there. And then these two bumps for me are going to give you the anterior surface, right? So when you're looking at this bone, again, whether you're looking at it from this way or this way, now you know that this is medial, this is the, ant this is the posterior surface because it doesn't have those bumps. Uh, you know this one, now I'm going to mentally put someone, this is the back of their head, this is where it's going in, it's on the same side as mine, so it must be a left. Whereas here, it's on my right side, so it's got to be the left also. And mind you, the reason we focus on this left-right stuff is this is a big problem in hospitals. People, they kind of look at a patient, and it's a mirror image kind of thing, and there is a definite left and right to your body, right? So you're looking at them, it's on your left, it's their right kind of thing, right? So it's good to get used to kind of identifying and being specific uh, what particular part of the body you're looking at, left or right, right? So operate on the left, the, you know, your left carotid artery is burst, you know, to make sure you're, you're, you know that you're not operating on the right carotid artery or something. That's the whole purpose behind this. All right, so let's go again to the bottom portion over here. Medial epicondyle is the big thing. Again, we're looking at the anterior surface at this point. You got two little indents right here. Uh, they are on your lab practical, but I don't really stress those. Your ulnar bone is on that side, and your radial bone is on this side. That's the front of your arm. And as I said, I wouldn't say don't, they're not super distinct, especially on, on real bones right over here. But underneath, you got this whole joint surface area over here. And the whole thing is called a condyle. And nobody really calls it that. They separate out the two sides of this condyle. You'll see kind of a rounded part here. And then this part over here, this region over here is the trochlea. And this is where your trochlea notch of the ulnar bone is going to articulate with. And then this part of it, the lateral part, is where the radial bone is going to articulate with. And so your radial head has got that hockey puck on the top articulating here. 
Whereas your ulnar bone has got this kind of curve, it's curved around the back right here, articulating with that right there. Right? So that's, that, those are those attachments right here, right? Your capitulum and your trochlea. The way I remember this is this is your radial head right here. You can think of the radial head has a cap on it, capitulum. Whereas trochlea, you know, kind of looks like a like a pulley kind of thing. That's that's what it's named after. But it's also this part of the um, ulnar bone is called the trochlea notch, and right? that's where the trochlea fits in. On the back, over here on the posterior side of your humerus, right over here, you got this big indent right over here where this hook, this hooked part of your ulnar bone fits in, right? This part is called the olacranin and it fits into the olacranin fossa, right? So that's the distal side. Uh, we had those, the condyle, these two condyle surfaces. We had the medial epicondyle. There is a lateral epicondyle. It's very weak. It doesn't really show too much. And then on the back, you have the, your olacranin fossa. And so that is your humerus. And so kind of take a look at this side versus this. This is a very much more pronounced divot right there where your olacranin. So that's the posterior side. Right? When you look at your, when you feel or look at your elbow, this is your elbow, right? Feel on your own arm where your elbow is. It's on the posterior side of your arm right there, right? So that's where it fits in. So let's go to your ulnar bone. This is your olacranin, fitting in the olacranin fossa. And the other surfaces, things you wanna know, this is the coronoid process, right? The little hook part over here, right? So this is what your elbow is. This is what you're feeling when you feel your, uh, when you feel your elbow right there, right? You can feel your funny bone on the medial side, and then you could feel your olacranin, right? That's really what makes up your elbow. And then this is where that joint surface is. That's where the articulation is. That'll be your trochlea notch inside here, right? So your olacranin, coronoid fossa, and then your uh, trochlea notch. The other thing, you, the other two things that are important right here, this surface right here is your ulnar tuberosity. Right? This is going to be where your brachialis muscle inserts onto. That'll give you, that's not super distinct from the outside right here, but that doesn't matter because this is a very obvious anterior side to the ulnar bone, right? So you know you're looking at the front right here because this is facing out at you. The medial lateral thing is a little more difficult, it's a little more subtle. But right here, this surface right here is where the uh, radial head fits in. Right, remember that hockey puck looking thing? Right, it fits in and nestles right into this fossa called the radial notch. The radial notch fits in right over here. Right, so let's go back to the articulated view. Right over here, this is the radial notch. Which side is it facing? Is this, so is this on the medial or lateral side? Ask yourself, and how would you know? What gives it away? Which side is the radial bone on? The medial or lateral? Right, this is gonna be facing laterally. So this is facing out laterally. This is facing forward. So that's how you're gonna tell your right and left ulnar bones, right? Again, you can mentally place this on somebody whether you're looking at the front or the back of it right there, as long as you could see this. So I wouldn't show it without you being able to recognize your radial notch right there. All right, so you got the, all those features, there's like one, two, three, four, five things to know up on the proximal side there. On the distal end, this is the ulnar head over here, this whole region right here and this little, nub right here is called the styloid process. This is kind of on the posterior side, so don't worry about that as something that'll you know, tell you whether this is right or left, right? That's just the name of it is the styloid processes, just like that thing in your temporal bone. 
so radial head. And so that radial head, where was the radial head on your radius? Well, the, where is the radius head? It's on the proximal side, right? Your ulnar head is on the distal side. And guess where that fits into? What do you think this notch is called on the radial bone? This is the ulnar notch right over here. And if you can recognize that, then you know that this is the medial side of your radius bone. That's really the only super distinct thing. If you can see it, if you can make it out, and I wouldn't try to trick you on it, I'd show it very pronounced, uh, then you know it's on the medial side, right? Whereas your styloid process, right? This is making out, this is articulating with your, those two hand bones down here on the thumb side, right? This is your styloid process that's on the lateral side. So medial lateral, right? You could tell from this distal end, you can't really tell it on the proximal end of the radius. So let's go back to the top the radial head, right? That's pretty, nothing else has this rounded shape. And if you want to look, let me show you over here, right? Here is your, right over here, your funny bone right there, right? Which means this is your ulnar. You could walk, I mean, this is your medial side. Here's your elbow. You can walk back your fingers all the way, right? And then you end up on the pinky side right here. Right? Your radial bone kind of gets buried in your forearm muscle, so it's kind of hard to make out. But what your radial bone is doing when you're doing this movement, right, this is a pronation, supination movement. So if you grab your whole elbow and kind of feel under that, you could feel the radial head actually rotating around right there, right? And that kind of gives you, I don't know, it just kind of helps you get that extra sense of what's going on in that joint right there, right? You can kind of feel that. That's your radial head, right? Spinning around in that, on top of that capitulum and against that ulnar, uh, the radial notch. Also, again, this little bump right here, which is kind of nestled in, like hugging your ulnar bone right there, that's your radial tuberosity, right? This is where your biceps break eye tendon inserts onto, right? So that's definitely something you'll have to know for the muscle, right? So I'll stress that and ask you about it, right? That radial tuberosity. So you got the head and the radial tuberosity on the proximal side. And then on the distal side, you got that styloid processes, right? You got two styloid processes, one on the medial, one on the lateral. This is the one on the, ra on the radial bone. The only thing that you don't have to know what this feature is or what these features are, but on the back of the hand, right? Now we're looking at the back. You see these sort of pronounced ridges right over here, right? And you see on the front of the arm, you got this big smooth surface right here. This is the anterior surface of your radial bone. That's the posterior surface right there. So that's how you're gonna tell that this is the anterior surface, this is the medial, this is the lateral surface. So this one, again, mentally place this on somebody and then I'll be able to tell you. This is one of the harder ones because this isn't a named surface, but that's how you would tell the difference between right and left on your radius. Right. And I believe that on that last video, I went over these bones right here. Does anybody wanna go over the bone, there's no features or anything you gotta know uh, for your hand, or right? it's just the bones, right? There's those eight carpal bones, you got the five metacarpal bones, and then you got those phalanges, right? On each finger, you got the proximal, middle, and distal phalanx of the particular digit. So naming wise, if I ask you what this bone is right here, you're gonna say it's the proximal phalange of digit three or middle finger, right? Either one. Remember this is first digit, second, third, fourth, fifth. So this is the distal phalange digit three. And on the lab activities, I give you some indication of the proper or how we do it. Obviously, 
you know, there's not a whole consensus. Complete anatomy is, is saying this one, but they're using index ring finger, which doesn't seem too anatomically official, but I guess it is. But we'll say what I usually use is of phalanx. Each phalanx is an individual bone, right? This is the digit for your own perspective, right? Your palm is over here and then your fingers come out like this right and so your knuckles your knuckles right are at the end of your metacarpals right over there so if you could feel your knuckles right there that's what you're feeling right here and then your your digits are made up of those two or three phalanges so those are actually pretty easy just remember that digit one is in your thumb. And then for these guys, you, know, you have those eight carpal bones. And if you look at the images that I ask you, um, really only kind of, to be honest, th these ones that are articulating with the radius right here, your scaphoid and your lunate, uh, those are important ones. And the one that articulates with your first metacarpal. These are kind of clinically really a little more important right here, right? This, so this is the trapezium, your scaphoid, and your lunate. And if my video has your dumb mnemonic, I don't want to go. So that's your upper limb. So you got your scapula, humerus, radius, and ulnar are the ones you're going to have to identify right and left. All right, so that's your upper limb attached to your pectoral girdle or shoulder girdle. And in the next video, we're going to go over the pelvic girdle where your lower limbs are attached. So you're going to want to pay attention to the, both the similarities and the differences as we do so. All right, see you next time.